Okay. Were you, did you have something? I, I did. You, you know like what? You you know were... what? I, 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 this show's how old now? Three years? It's a few years old. Okay. Yeah. We started the show. I look like a baby. We could have a picture of me to look like on the you show do, for starting you, the Yeah. I look like do. a little Which baby. Which is funny because I look at you and I don't think how you could change. You know, your know. hair is always very similar. Your face, like it's... But it's true. You look, you look I look so like a little younger. baby. Yeah. Well, guys, um, since then, we've had so many comments from evangelicals. The first episode to this episode, evangelicals will comment, people of all the religions will comment, and we have to answer sometimes. So how do you answer without being a jerk is the question. Uh, sometimes oh, sometimes I just don't answer. Uh, yeah. Often, because I just feel like if, you, if all you if want... If it's a troll, I'm not going to answer. If all you want is to fight... Do then I'm just going to leave you be. But sometimes I feel like people are genuinely looking for... Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so if you're Christian, you use the Bible. If you're a Latter-day Saint, you use the Bible. And the Bible says in Matthew 28, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It's telling you to go and spread the gospel. Spread the good news, right? Yes. Right. So... But, but where's the line there? Like, should we all be going on atheist YouTube channels and telling oh, them, you know, how saying. wrong they are in the comment section? Or, or, or what yeah. does that mean, and how do we deal with that kind of a commandment? Well, I think you use the gift of discernment, mm -hmm. and you also use social literacy. So there are often times where on, on this channel or my channel, someone will comment something, and they're like, huh, answer me this question, Mormon. Blah, 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 right. blah, 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 stupid cult. And so now I just reply, well, sounds like you've made up your mind. <laughs> so I don't actually reply. Um, but obviously, that's socially illiterate. So when if you send our show a weird message and we just say, have a nice day, and you go, they won't answer me. It's because you're being socially illiterate, right? You don't get to throw away how normal human beings interact just because we have different religions and just because you're operating under the banner of theological differences. You gotta be normal. First and foremost, if you're not, we're not gonna answer you. Let's just get that out of the way. Okay. So now, so angry. <laughs> so now let's put pause here, and now let's analyze how Kwaku just interacted, you know? It was, All right, it was, it was aggressive, wasn't it? Let's go to the scriptures. <laughs> um, this is the Book of Mormon, 3rd Nephi 11. He that hath the spirit of contention Quickly. is not of me, saith the Lord, but is of the devil, who is the father of contention. And he stirreth up the hearts of men to contend with anger, one with another. Behold, this is not my doctrine to stir up the hearts of men with anger, one against another. But this is my doctrine, that such things... Should be done away. Done away. Okay. You're out, fired. Fire. Fire! 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 But oh. <laughs> I barely get paid. I can't get fired. But a question I have is, um, so, <laughs> so when we say the spirit of contention, that person is not of God. But the question is, how do you define spirit of contention? Because there's also righteous anger that right. the scriptures talk about. Right. So what is the difference between contentious anger and righteous anger? The Justin, difference, what do you think? It's hard I'm, to I'm discern. looking it up on my phone. And of course the person giving out always thinks they have righteous anger, right? But then if, you, if you're on the brute end of their righteous anger, you think they're having, it's contentious, right? So Wait, what is this episode about? Contention and missionary work. Oh, great. It's deep. Yeah. Well, come on, we can make it a little so deeper. You I, know? Think, I think no one has ever joined the church because they felt attacked. True. That's a great point. <laughs> I've never seen someone get yelled at or, or like, angried at and thought, oh, you're right. I'm going to now join your church and do everything you've told me. <laughs> I have seen thousands, if not millions, of people join the church because they felt loved. Mm. Yes. Even though they did not agree with what you said, people 20 years down the road think, oh, my friend, who was a member of the church, was always so kind and loving and respectful. Maybe there was some stock. And then when the missionaries come to their door, they're nice enough to let them in. Yeah, and so that's where I think that the the root of real missionary work is is planting seeds. Mm. It's not about chopping down because you know it's the what's the tares the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. It's not about destroying all the tares. It's about planting wheat. Hmm. You know that's a great point. I, I feel like because I feel like as missionaries, there's so many times where people come at you and are like, "Oh, I'm right. I need to prove to you I'm right. I need to prove to you that you're wrong." And just emotionally, I was like, this is 
a waste of both of our time. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I'm going to be kind to you. I'm going to love you. And maybe someday that'll, like, give you the desire to want to learn more. Um, that's, like, my view of it. So if I were a leader of the church, if I were a prophet, I think I would have a really hard time being there and being, like, like, because some, some people are really, like, Elder Holland sometimes is, like, that really powerful, yeah. you know, fire. What conceivable historical or doctrinal or procedural issue could ever overshadow or negate one's consuming spiritual conviction. Um, some leaders of the church have always had that power, and I, I think I would have a hard time doing that because I want to be so nice and friendly. So that is where I think the line is kind of hard to find is. Yeah, I think that, that there's a, a fine line between disagreeing and being contentious. I think yeah. oftentimes people will have questions and so if like one person has a question, the other person is trying to answer that sincere question. Sometimes people just ask questions as a challenge, you know, as, right. hey, I dare you to answer this because I already have my response prepared to show you why you're wrong. And then there are people that are truly like, I don't understand this. Uh, can you help me? You know? Right. And so if you have one sincere question and a sincere answer, I think that's fine, even if you disagree. Uh, but if it's one person if, trying yeah. to convince the other that they're wrong right. and that person trying to convince the other person that they're wrong, then that's contention and that's not how the gospel of Jesus Christ is meant to be shared. And if that is your idea of missionary work, you are a missionary for the wrong side. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would say the wrong side. No, it just says right here, contention okay. is yeah. of the devil. But that's obviously, that's invoking some hyperbole, right? In poeticism. That's not actually saying you're a missionary of the devil, right? The spirit will oh. never tell you to be contentious. True. But the question is, how do we define contentious? That's what I'm saying. Well, and I, mean, I think that's where David was getting at, is that, like, if, if, if your intention... Is, is to just convince the other person to, they're wrong. Is to change their mind mm -hmm. with your words in that moment. Like, just like, I'm going to change their mind no matter what. I feel... Oh, yeah, I think know. that. Yeah, but obviously I do think, like, a great example, Parley P. Pratt, right? He was yeah, one of the... Yeah. He did do debates and stuff all the time. Right. He, he wrote some some tough letters. He wasn't serving the devil, though, right? We... we <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> right? Uh, I think, I think, no, this is something that I, I've, I think ever since I even joined the church, I've been confused on this. Yeah. Because we say, like, always be, like, just always be nice, which we should be nice when we're preaching the gospel. You don't go preach, right. so we do not go to, like, Catholic churches with picket signs and, like, right. the Pope is wrong. Like, we don't protest other so, people. We don't do things so like that, So maybe the right? difference is that, like... It is important to get the information out there. Yeah. We shouldn't just wait for people to come to us. That yeah. isn't, and I think it would be totally appropriate to get on a soapbox and, and shout to the street because people just got to know. And, and what we do with this show is we dispel a lot of rumors, right? We right. dispel myths. Um, so YouTube, ha there are parts of YouTube that talk about our church and they say this, and we come and we say, no, it's actually this, right? right? So if someone wants to say, are we just replying to them? One episode, we literally did just, re Ian and I just roasted a video, <laughs> right? We just made fun of it. So it's true. I don't, I, I, when we say we're not of contention, I just want to know, like, what exactly does that mean? Because whenever you dive into it deep, you, I find a bunch of different layers, you know? When I think of yeah. contentions, I, like when Christ in the New Testament is like, there should be no contentions among you. Um, at least when I read that, I felt like he was saying there should be no disagreements about, about my doctrine. In the Book of Mormon, he's saying there should be no anger in your heart. Right. And so I, I feel I like think, it's... I think you can almost tell when the spirit's gone from a conversation. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's when it's time to... When you're motivated by anger. Right. Because I've been, I've been in a, a conversation with somebody, you know, who um, was a Jehovah's Witness... And, and we, we were just walking, said hi, and then she asked me a question. She was like, so you guys believe in uh, Joseph Smith? And I was like, oh, yeah, we do. We believe it's a prophet. And she's like, okay. And, and it, for like the first two minutes, it was this really nice, calm conversation where we had different opinions. And I was like, oh, yeah, we believe this and this and this, even though I knew it was against what she believed. And I felt like, I felt the spirit and I felt good. And then she was like, oh, but what about you guys and Jehovah? You guys believe like he's multiple beings. And she's like, 
And I'm like, and then I got, I got triggered because I think it's the dumbest thing because I feel like I know exactly why we can prove that Jehovah is Jesus Christ. And I just, and then that's when I knew the spirit was gone and I lost it. And the next five, 10 minutes was me just, no, because in this scripture says this and this scripture says this, you're actually wrong because of this and this and this and this and this. And she yeah. just sat there. And then at the end she was like, I gotta go. Yeah. And, and I like sat there and afterwards I was like, yeah, that was unnecessary. <laughs> that didn't help me at all. You know, uh, yeah. it, it was prideful on my end to think, oh, I'm so smart. Well, yeah. it's also like there's there's a number of comments I ignore and don't reply to and messages I won't reply to if it's like, I have a question. You guys believe this, but this scripture says such and such and such and such and such and such. Well, how can that be true if you guys contradict such and such, right? If your mind's already made up, what's the point of me responding? Right. It's taking time out of my day to do that. And two, everyone, everyone claims to know the Bible better than the next guy. But everyone thinks they've got their organic Bible, right? So people are like, just read the Bible for yourself. And you go, yeah, I do. <laughs> and this is what I'm getting. No, no, this is what it's saying. Okay, so you want me to interpret it the way you want to, which right? Is, but no one comes out and says that except for us. Which in and of itself is another testimony to our church, you know, yeah. because like... At least we're honest about it. Hey, yeah, we think we're right. We think you should read it through our lens and that's how... That's, like, we well, just were honest, and that's why we know? need the Book of Mormon, you know? Like, yeah. this is like, because if we just had the Bible, then everyone would have... Like, why are there so many different churches? Why are there so many different opinions? You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's not enough. So essentially being a missionary is hard. One <laughs> of one of the favorite things about our church and our missionary program is that we uh, we teach that we, we we teach that we are not supposed to go around tearing other people's faith down, mm -hmm. but rather to add to the faith that they already have. Yeah. And I think that that's a Christ like way of doing things. I like what you said about the wheat and the tares. Like we're here to plant wheat, not to, you know, be uprooting tares, you know? I, and, because and, if you uproot the tares, you might accidentally uproot the wheat. Yeah. Because. I don't want to go around and tell people why they're wrong. I just want to go around and say, this is what I believe. You can accept it if you want. And if you don't, then that's fine. I will leave you alone. <laughs> I, think, I think missionary work is about building, building people's faith, not tearing it down. Mm -hmm. You know, just as a general rule. Yeah, so maybe I, I guess our <laughs> invitation for other people like who have their faith and like we welcome healthy discussion, but I just don't think, you just really got to think, why am I asking these questions? Why am I in instigating this conversation? Yeah. Because in, the, in your heart of hearts, if you feel that it's because you want to prove someone wrong and the contentious spirit, I just don't think that's Christ-like. Mm -mm. Regardless of your religion, you know. Yeah. Well, we know that. I feel like we've made it very clear. Don't be a jerk. But you know, you know, there's going to be some people that watch the whole thing and went, "Hmm, nice message." <laughs> Listen, you cultists. Like you just know they're just like cult magic underwear. Like they just can't help it. Like there's just a magnet in their hand that just keeps. And that's called an addiction. It is. In true. which we have a 12-step recovery program, <laughs> and if you need help, you like you yes. can go to the website. We'll leave the link below. Well, anyway, guys. Thank you for watching this episode of Saints Unscripted. And if you liked it, share it with your friends and family and comment below and follow us on social medias. Also, um, I love to wake oh up in the gosh. morning and have a nice, cool, refreshing drink of Mountain Dew low calorie diet. Quick is watching his weight. Mmm. Hey, share in the comments uh, your thoughts on this. We This was oh, really yeah. just like a, a good discussion and we'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Yes. What do you think, like, where's the line between missionary work and, and contention and how do you handle that? 